Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing really, really well and having a lovely day. Today I am going to be doing a bookshelf tour. These are my shelves and I'm excited to share with you like what is on them, how I organise my books and everything like that. So the last bookshelf tour that I did was a while ago now. I will link it, but it was in our old place. So since then I've got like the same shelves but a different colour um, and a lot more books. So I thought I would give you like a quick tour of what it looks like and maybe this will give you some ideas for how to organise your books. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. Please remember to subscribe if you do and let's get into the video. So just very quickly, I wanted to show you like what they look like from standing across the other side of the room. Um, I'm not gonna show the rest of the room because it's kind of a mess and honestly, I wanted to film this while it was still light. So um, yeah, I haven't tidied the rest of the room so I'm just showing you these for today. But right in front of the shelf, like right here in the corner, if I can point here in the corner, is my desk. And then over there we just have uh, my like board where I put my journaling cards and I sometimes sit there to film. And then these are my shelves and then the door to the room is here. So yeah, this is what it looks like from afar. And now I'm going to take you in closer and show you everything in more detail. So starting with the left shelf on the top. I used to have my degree certificates lined up there, but I had to take them down recently because I needed to like photocopy them for something. And then I just couldn't be bothered to put them back up. So it's not like organized up there at the moment, but I just have my Barbie doll, which was from the year that I was born. And then I have my three Bratz dolls that are from like one of the really early launches, which I bought during lockdown because I went on kind of a nostalgia kick and I still have them and I love them and I still need to buy Sasha. But yeah, they are just kind of up there because there's no space for them on my shelves anymore, sadly. I did recently have like a reorganise after my birthday and like the books that I got for my birthday. So yeah, I ended up having to move those onto the top. But then moving on to the actual shelves. So I'm just going to move you down slightly. So I organise my books in kind of a variety of ways. It just depends how many I have in a certain category and how they fit on the shelves. So obviously I read mostly romance books. So most of the books I own are romance. Um, and this top shelf here on the left side is for romance books which I have read. So you can see that there's not many of them. These are all pretty much standalones apart from Well Met and Well Played by Jen DeLuca, which I have like the hardback of Well Met and the paperback of Well Played, which is why they're up here because they don't fit onto my series shelf. But other than that, most of the books up there are standalone books or books where I only own one in the series. Um, and yeah, they are ones that I have read. And then next to it, I have this photo frame, which I think I got from Matalan, like it wasn't anything special, but the prints inside, I think were from Bookishly. So I will link that below. And then I have this pot here, which I'll just go and grab. So it's this plant pot, which my boyfriend hates, <laughs> but I think it's just so cute. It was from someone in our building. She was actually just gonna throw them away. And I said like, oh, I'll have them if you're getting rid of them. Um, and she gave me them. Inside here, I just keep all of my bookmarks. I'd been looking for somewhere to keep my bookmarks. So um, I was just really happy when she said that I could have this because yeah, I just saw all of my bookmarks in here. So a lot of these are from Words and Kisses because that's where I get a lot of my books from. This next shelf down, I have all of my standalone books that I haven't yet read. So you can tell that there is more of the unread than the read books, but I am working my way through them. And my rule is that when this shelf gets full, which it is now because I have this photo frame there and I want that to stay there. So like any more books on here and I won't be able to fit them on there. So my rule is that if it gets to that point, I need to read them and move them up to that shelf. So as I said, not all of these are actually standalones. Like I know this one by Mila Gray, Come Back to Me, is part of a series. Um, the Simple World, I'm pretty sure has like a follow up book featuring the same couple. I'm pretty sure this one as well, Recipe for Persuasion, is also in a series, but I only own one book in the series, which is why they're on my standalone shelf. So yeah, these are overwhelmingly from Words and Kisses, which is a UK-based romance-specific bookstore. She's online, but she does like a book subscription every month and I get two books a month, which is why this shelf is very full. Um, most, if not I would say probably like 80% of the books on this shelf are from Words and Kisses subscription. So 
yeah, that is my unread standalone shelf. So they are the two shelves on the left side and I'm actually now gonna move you over to the right side to talk about these top two shelves because that's kind of how I organize my books. Like I have contemporary romances on like the four top shelves and then it's historical and then it's like other stuff. So um, yeah, I think this makes the most sense to do it this way. The top shelf is for my young adult and new adult romances. So it's pretty much exclusively young adult in this category, apart from Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas, which has characters that are in high school, but it's definitely got very mature themes in it. So it's definitely an adult book, um, but it features like younger characters. And I kind of have all of those in one collection because I didn't really know where else to put them. Like I do have some new adults um, in my series collection, which technically the To All The Boys I've Loved Before series could go there, but it's just kind of the way that I split it up. I decided to put these separately and that's regardless of whether I've read them or not. So I've read You Say It First, I've read Punk 57, I've read A Quiet Kind of Thunder, I've read the To All The Boys series. And that's it. So they're up there, um, kind of read and unread. And I just like having them in one category there. I feel like I probably should move Punk 57 because that definitely stands out among all the others as being an adult book rather than a uh, young adult. Um, yeah, that's what I have on that shelf. I don't tend to read like a ton of YA, um, which is why there's not too much there. Then I have this photo frame, which I feel like is kind of not reflecting the best um but this is the frame is from H&M Home and then the print was from I think Girl and Cat Studio so again I will link it below um and then this print here is from oh my goodness I'm forgetting the name let me see if it's like written on there yeah it's from Simply Katie and I actually included this in my uh, birthday haul which I posted I think it should be the video before this one or like two videos ago um but I absolutely love this print so much I still need to get a frame for it because I only just got it and I don't have one yet but for now it's just kind of at the back there and I think it's so pretty and then on the very end we just have my collection of the complete works of Shakespeare so I've got tragedies histories poems and sonnets and comedies memoir and essays I got this from my dad and stepmom probably like 15 years ago when I was really, really young. Um, and I've never read them because when I had to read Shakespeare in school, I tended to just like buy the book separately because they are kind of big and like the writing's really tiny. But yeah, they are there and I probably won't ever get rid of them. Annoyingly, they don't fit on like a lower shelf because of the height of them. So they always have to go on my top shelf, but I do feel like they look quite, I don't know like an old man's library and like a manor house or something. So I kind of like them being there. Um, but that is the top shelf on the right hand side. Then the second shelf down on this side is my romance series shelf. So this is probably, probably my favourite shelf. I don't know. I feel like this one and let me turn you, this one are both my favourites. But I just love all of the books on this shelf so much. Obviously, I love them enough to buy the next book in the series. So I'll just quickly go through these, I guess, because yeah, they are some of my favourites. So I have the Lark Cove series by Daphne Perry, which I've read and I loved. I have the True North series by Serena Bowen. I've read this one. This is the third book in the series because I listened to the first two on audio um, and then I bought the rest of them. So I still need to buy the first two again, but this is the third book and I've read that. And then that's books four and five, which I haven't yet read. I just thought I'd move you in a little bit. <laughs> um, this is the, what's it, what's the series called? I always forget the name of the series. Oh, I can't remember the name. The first book is Fix Her Up, then you have Love Her or Lose Her and then Tools of Engagement. These two were definitely my favourite in the series. I did like Fix Her Up as well, but yeah, I loved both of these so, so much. Um, so I still need to buy Fix Her Up, but I have both of those. It does annoy me that they're not the same height though. I don't know if you can tell, but this one is a bit taller. Um, then I have the, I don't know the name of this series either, it's Serena Bowen's like um, new adult like college series and I've read The Year We Fell Down which is about two students who are both dealing with disabilities and it was really really good, I really liked it and then um, The Year We Hid Away I haven't read yet and there's a lot of books in the series actually so this is one I'm going to be like continuing to collect. Then we have what is probably my favourite romance of all time which is Bohemian by Catherine Nolan and then Landslide which is like the follow-up. I read Landslide last year, Bohemian I read in 2019 but I just recently got the paperback 
um, for my birthday and I can't wait to reread it. Then I have the Vampire series by Tessa Bailey. I cannot remember the name of it. These are the first two books. I don't think the third one's out yet, but I think it's coming out soon. Um, and I enjoyed it. I really liked Reborn Yesterday. This Time Tomorrow was like good, but not my favourite. So I don't know if I'm going to read the third one or not, but um, yeah, I've got those. Then we have Raph and Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I don't know the name of this series either, but this is what they look like. I just love the covers of these so much. Then this series here up to here is um, Stacey Hart's Austin series. I've read the first three books and I still need to read the last two. Then I've just moved you along a bit because the next ones are Abby Jimenez's um, Friend Zone series so uh there's the friend zone and happy ever after playlist i really loved both the third one has come out and i plan to order it very soon i think words and kisses actually has like a signed copy or like a few signed copies left over so i'm hoping to get one of those then these are some of the oldest like i feel like this kind of kick-started my love for wanting to collect romance books and they are helen huang's kiss quotient and the bride test series so the third one, which is The Heart Principle, I think comes out this year, although I'm not sure, but um, I love these books so much and I really need to reread them again. Then I have my favourite Talia Hibbert's um, Brown Sister series. These are all signed copies from Words and Kisses and they are my pride and joy. I love them so much. And then finally, I have the Bromance Book Club series by Lisa K. Adams. And I've only read the first one and haven't read these two yet. Then moving down a shelf, I have my historical romances. So these are on two shelves. I have this shelf on the left and then this shelf on the right. So I'll start with the left. So over here on the left, I have some books that aren't actually historical romance, but they are classics set in like a historical setting. And honestly, they're just on the shelf because there wasn't room anywhere else. But I do feel like they kind of work with like being on the same shelf as historical romances. Um, and yeah, what I have here is all of Jane Austen's books, I think. Then I have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which I read last year. And then I have Middle March by George Eliot there, which I'm trying to work myself up to reading, but it's just so long that I'm kind of like scared to read it. Then after that, I have historical romances and they are all historical romances that I haven't read. So there wasn't really any point in splitting it up into like series and standalones with these books because to my knowledge I can't think of a historical romance that's just a standalone like I feel like almost all of them are part of a series um and I eventually do plan to like collect more so I decided not to sort it into like series and standalones but instead to sort it into um like whether I've read them or not so here we have a mix of like books that I just haven't read that I only own one of and then series that I haven't read and then moving on to this side I have the historical romances that I have read um so again some of these are part of a series and like I haven't read the entire series so these ones here um I've read The Highwayman, The Hunter and The Highlander by Kerrigan Byrne I haven't yet read The Duke or The Scott Beds His Wife but because I've started the series, like, I didn't want to split the series up. So, so I decided to put it all here. And I feel like that kind of works for, like, my layout as well. Because then it means that that shelf isn't too full. Because it's getting kind of full. So, yeah, that is kind of how I have that organised. And then over here on the end, I have the other frame, which is from H&M Home. And then this print in the middle is a quote from Little Women and I got that from um, Bookishly and it's actually printed on a page of Little Women as well which I love. Then I just have a couple more candles and this little bear, it's slightly out of shot so I'll bring it in, this little bear thing that my, my mum got me for my birthday last year when um, it was like in lockdown so I didn't get to see her so it just says it has a little box it came with sometimes all you need is a big bear hug. It's not in focus, but yeah, that's what it says. Um, and yeah, that is that shelf. So they are all of my like historical romances. I don't have a crazy amount, I forgot to say, but um, in terms of the books that I own, like I guess to some people, this will seem like a lot of books, especially a lot of romance books. But I am trying to like not buy books just for the sake of it. Like with historical romances, I know a lot of booktubers like essentially collect them, which I think is awesome. Like there's so many beautiful like step backs and stuff but I'm really trying like not to just 
buy books when I see them on sale for the sake of it like I'm only buying them when I really really want them and when I know I'm going to read them like soon um maybe with the exception of my words and kisses subscription which is kind of piling up a little bit but um I am excited to read all of those but yeah I try not to like over buy books if I can help it now moving on to the fourth shelf down which we are now like past all of the romance books and these are other genres so this shelf starting on the left from the guest list to this richard osman book they are all murder mysteries specifically contemporary murder mysteries then i have uh, a couple of libby page books which are just like contemporary fiction um i have this anxious people by frederick backman book which i haven't got around to reading yet but i really want to soon and then i have a copy of soul weaver by eric j van which is actually a book that i proofread um if you don't know i do like freelance proofreading um and editing and that was one of the earlier ones that i did and it's a uh fantasy which really isn't my genre but this is what it looks like and i enjoyed reading it a lot then i have someday someday maybe by lauren graham which i love uh this is such a good book i really 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 enjoyed it and i really love lauren graham if you don't know she is uh, she played Lorelai in Gilmore Girls, which is my favourite TV show of all time. Um, and yeah, I love this so much. I need to reread it at some point. Then I just have some other books. So I think The Truants is, I don't know if it's like a thriller or what really, but I have that. Um, then I have The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, which I haven't read yet, but that's a like murder mystery. Then I have two non-fiction books. I don't have many because I don't read very much non-fiction. I used to have... Um, Marie Kondo's book but I literally just decluttered that one uh, and then after that I have classics so I'll take you in a little bit closer to see those so here we have all of my classics that aren't the ones that I already showed you on the historical romance shelf so I haven't read many of these I've read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley um, I started The Trial by Franz Kafka and I didn't get very far in and then I've read To Kill a Mockingbird this book here um, Slave Girl The Diary of Clotty um, is a book that I absolutely love. I read it. Um, when did I read it? I think it was in December I reread it. It was a childhood favourite and I kept it for so long um, and it definitely holds up. Like I really enjoyed reading that one. Then the next three shelves are all full of Agatha Christie books. So I am a huge fan of Agatha Christie. Aside from romance, she is like or like murder mysteries, I guess, are my next favourite thing to read. Um, but particularly Agatha Christie's murder mysteries. I have almost finished all of the Poirot books and it's actually one of my goals this year to um, read all of the Poirot books. So I have like three more to go, I think. Um, so on this shelf, I just have a biography, which I've read like I think a little bit of, but I need to pick it up again. Um, then I have some books which aren't um, Poirots, they're just kind of, I think, standalones, they're not Marple either. Then I have The Mystery of Three Quarters by Sophie Hanna, which is like a new instalment in the series, obviously not written by Ag Agatha Christie because she died in the 70s, um, but it's written by Sophie Hanna, kind of in the style of her using the Poirot character, I think. So I haven't read this, but I do really, really want to read it. I'm hoping that it at least somewhat holds up to like her writing. Then I have a brief guide to Agatha Christie, which is like, I don't know if it's a biography or what really, but I will read that at some point as well. Then I have a copy of Ordeal by Innocence, which is another standalone Agatha Christie. This one was gifted to me by my boyfriend's parents, so I will keep hold of that one, um, even though it doesn't kind of match the style of my others. Then these more colourful, like mass market paperback size ones over here are all Agatha Christie, but some of them are Poirot's, some of them are Marple, some of them are just like nothing, um, just other books that she's written. I kind of collect them like if I'll find one in a charity shop and it's an affordable price and I don't already own it, I will buy a copy of it. But um, I do own most of the Agatha Christie books in a different version, which I'll show you in a moment. Then on the second to last shelf on the bottom, I have all of my hardback Agatha Christie books. So um, the ones without stickers are the ones that I've read and they are all of the Poirot ones. So I've got it in order of Poirots and then those green ones are the ones I still have left to read that are Poirot. The pink are Marple and then these, I think the yellow are standalone ones. The blue are maybe Tommy and Tuppence. And then the orange might be someone else, like another one of her characters, her lesser known ones. But um, that is how I have them all organised. I have a lot of them. I don't have all of them. 
Um, there are specific, actually, I'll just show you one of them. That would make it easier than talking about it. Um, but this is, for example, Halloween Party which I read in October last year. These were only around for a short amount of time. I think in 2004 is when they started being published and they came in like a magazine subscription. So they're kind of hard to get hold of. Like as time goes on, they're more and more difficult to get, especially some of the later ones in the series or in the like Poirot collection. So I have like all of the earlier ones. Um, but yeah, there's not that many more that I need to get. These tend to be the copies I actually read, whereas these ones just look pretty. Um, I have them so low down because they're so dark that in the background of my videos, like it just doesn't look good. But I do really, really like owning them. Um, and then this is the other plant pot to match that one up there. Um, and then at the very bottom, I'll just touch on very quickly. This shelf is actually not my stuff. This is my boyfriend's Formula One shelf where he has all of his like formula one autobiographies and his shelves are completely full he has so much manga he has the same amount of shelving as i do um but he has a lot of manga and that kind of fills it all up so i very graciously gifted him this shelf um so yeah that is his and then at the bottom on this side i have some kind of miscellaneous books i've got driving test books which i need to use at some point um, I've got some academic books from when I was doing my PhD and then I have this 1001 books which was a gift and then all across here I don't know how well you can see that but sorry about the dust on the floor um, but all across here are Mary Kate and Ashley books so I was a huge fan of Mary Kate and Ashley when I was younger this book here which is completely battered and torn apart it's a twin thing is the first book that I ever read. Um, you can tell that it was very well loved. I sellotaped it back together. Um, but that was the first book I ever read and I will never get rid of these. So I have the two of a kind series and then these two are randomly in the wrong place. Um, but then the So Little Time series and there were actually TV shows for both of those book series and I was just as obsessed with those. Um, and then I have the Sweet 16 series and then at the end I just have a couple of biographies and some New York ones. Um, which was based on their film but yeah I was a huge Mary Kate and Ashley fan as I'm sure you can tell um, and yeah I'll just never get rid of these I don't read them maybe I should pick one up and see what it's like but um, yeah I don't read them anymore but they're just kind of there and I love them and yeah I'll never get rid of them. <laughs> So they are my bookshelves. I feel like I've talked through everything on them. If I've missed anything, just let me know in the comments and I can tell you like if it's a photo frame or whatever or a print, like where something's from. Um, but I think I got everything. Um, so yeah, that is kind of the overview of them all. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I hope you all subscribe for more content. I do make mostly romance focused content. So yeah, subscribe if you want to and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.